are doing some streaming. Let me check the framing here. Perfect. Everybody can see us. Everybody can. Excellent. Okay, great. So uh, let me get over to. All right, I can see the chat. Um, so today, Marissa and I have decided, or did you take it off? Oh, well, it's just me then. I have my, my Hawk Philsworth t-shirt on, which is uh, very important. If you don't know Phil Hawksworth, you should definitely go make fun of Phil by calling him Hawk Philsworth. Um, anyways, let me put my apron on. He loves it. He does love it. Phil loves, Phil loves abuse. That's, I, I believe it's just the British way. It's how you show a Brit... How do you show a Brit you love them as you ridicule them mercilessly? Or at least that's what I tell myself to, uh, to convince myself that we don't drive Phil to tears every day. <laughs> um, okay, so today we are going to make a hash. Um, so we've got these, these really cool tiny skillets that I need to get out of the pantry. Um, so, hold please, I'll be right back. Alright, so check these out. So these are great. They are, uh, they're tiny skillets. Each one is like the size of a, like a side plate, um, which makes them perfect for doing like individual skillets. You can kind of make your own, um, your own thing. <laughs> The spice. Oh, so is Marissa is currently cleaning our wok. We made Penang curry last night, and uh, the spice from it is now aerosolizing as she cleans the pan. Sorry. <laughs> uh, which way are you going? Oh, no. This way. Okay. I'll just let you go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm just going to get them in the oven. Um, so I'm going to turn the oven up to about 425. And I'm putting them in uh, just dry, like no, nothing on. And the reason for that is that what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, we just have a bunch of vegetables. So like this is a potato, we've got some carrots, um, some um, onion, garlic, a few other things that we're, we just don't want it to go bad, right? So we have a, um, we use a service called Milk Run. Milk Run brings us a bunch of good produce. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> so, Chris, the wok is huge. We got the biggest one we could because we batch cook a lot of times. So a lot of stuff that we make, we want to make not just dinner tonight, but dinner for, uh, like, maybe dinner tonight, lunch tomorrow, or, you know, with this particular one. Although this wok definitely looks bigger because Marissa is holding it. Um, <laughs> but we made, uh, we made what, like... It's not just bigger because I'm whole. It's huge. It's a bit, I mean, it's a big wok. But it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's fine. But yeah, like, see, that's just what I would use for a cereal bowl. Um, anyways, we, oh, yeah, we. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's big. Are you going to heat it up? What are you doing? I already cleaned it. Or are you going to dry it off? Or? I was going to dump gonna this water out. Water in there? I was going to dump it. Okay. Manage your own stuff. I'm not micromanaging you. All right, so uh, what was I talking about? I was making a hash. So um, we've got these carrots. We have a, a delivery service. That's what I was talking about. And they uh, they bring us like whatever's in season. So we got those. And then I don't know what these are. Uh, Do you want to try those? I just want to see what happens. OK. Um, I let's, can look up what they are. Let's play a game called Identify That Vegetable. Does anybody know what this is? Because I think, like it's not a radish. It doesn't look like a turnip. Smell it. It kind of smells like generic. Like this almost looks like celery too, which is kind of wild. I wonder, oh, is this like celery root or something? No, the celery... Oh, no, it's celeriac. Celeriac, and that looks like yeah, a. I'm gonna. Squirt. I'm just gonna cut it's it. Not a leek. It. We have um, leeks. We do have a bunch of leeks. I need to make leek soup. We do. Yeah, we need to do that. So. Oh, use that diced up potato. 
Oh yeah, we have leftover potatoes because we the last time that I made this hash, I made I cut up way too many potatoes. So we'll use those instead. Um, then we have. some cheese in here that we want to use, and let's see, definitely get the butter out. Eggs. Get some eggs, let's see there's like one yeah. egg left in this thing. Um, turnips. Turnips? Those are says they're turnips. Hakure turnips. <laughs> that hash, that hash will be good. I actually don't really like hash that much either, but we do these a lot and they're they're really good. Ooh. And I'm gonna make that thing again. So uh, I'm gonna get some mayo out and do you want it to be spicier this time? No, not after the dinner we had last night. Okay. okay. Alright, I think that's acceptable. Seems like enough stuff. So let's. You're in, uh, you're in my way. Oh, actually. Um, all right. So now that we've got it's that. It's hot again. It is hot. I was moving it, and I forgot it. It's fine. So we are going to. Uh, this is going to be like a two skillet meal. So we start in this skillet, which it looks like we need to give a quick rinse out to. So I'm just going to warm this up a bit. Um, there's just some leftovers from the last thing we cooked in it, which... What did we cook in this? Cheese? Uh, what is this? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it is, we're gonna, um, we're gonna get a little bit of that out of there, and then... Did you want me to not use the onion? I think you'll probably only end up using half an onion anyway. Yeah, that one will use that. Um, just to make sure that I didn't throw a whole onion in here already. I did. I definitely did throw a whole onion. You did. Yeah. Okay. See, you so this, but but this is. I literally just checked. <laughs> um, all right. So. The, the reason I like this hash is that um, white egg turnips. Yeah. So um, oh, turnips. the reason I like this hash is that it lets us just basically throw together whatever's in the fridge. Um, and most of this stuff, it, like everything that I've found with vegetables, they all kind of fall into major categories as far as cook times go. Um, so you've got like root vegetables, things like potatoes and beets and uh, turnips, uh, parsnips, stuff like that, that are gonna cook at a, um, like a slower rate, like, you, like a roasted thing. And then you've got stuff like onions, uh, peppers, that are gonna cook at more of like, you wanna saute those. Um, and then you've got stuff that I'm will cook. I'm deglazing the pan, because they're in It's gonna need it, yeah. Um, then you've got stuff like the things that'll cook quick, like, um, green onions or, or uh, greens that just need like a, like a minute. Um, so what we can do with this hash is we can just kind of cut up the stuff that we want to eat and when we feel like we have enough food, we can um, separate it by how long the things will take to cook and then throw them into a pan uh, in order. So let's start by, I'm just gonna grab one of these and let's just try it. Because uh, I don't know. You're gonna just try a turnip by itself? Uh, well, yeah, I want to make sure it is a turnip. Are you gonna know what it tastes like? What turnip tastes like? I mean, I'll, I will know at least. That's a no. Is. He doesn't know what it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> He's just gonna bluster his way through that answer. I'll at least know if it's a root vegetable. You know it's a root vegetable. In fact, just this shut is up. A root. Just stop talking. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, so that smells really kind of bright. Spicy? No, it's, but it's like bright. Um, so let's... You don't even know. I don't, don't know. No, I, I literally don't know. That's why I'm cutting it up so I can taste it. All right, 
right, so I'm just going to make it a little sliver. Taste that. I am paying attention. That's like, it's got almost like a horseradish vibe to it. Like, like super mellow, but like, do you see, take, take another bite. Think about horseradish while you taste this. Serious. No. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking about horseradish. See what I'm saying? No. I feel like you're, you're. I'm not, you're it's not even spicy. No, you, it's not spicy. You know the horseradish has a flavor other than spicy, right? Not for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's just being difficult. All right. You know why I'm being difficult? I was promised coffee. You see Ooh, what I have? That's fair. You don't have coffee. None. All right. None I'm coffee. So, I'm sorry. So I'll make coffee. Start watering. I did. It's on. Oh, perfect. All right. So uh, I don't know how these are going to roast. Though. I don't know. We should, what we should do is... Does anyone use turnips a lot? Here's it seems what, like you should um, put them on the man, like mandolin them and put them in like a salad. Because they, that would be they really good. taste like they're already... Like they're already edible. They're edible, edible like Yeah, 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 yeah. I like these. You these can are really mandolin good. some and put them on top today. Smart. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that. I was going to have you cook a little piece once you got the... The, I can do that too. Let's try it. Either. Yeah, take um, just take like a little thin piece, and let's cook it and see what it tastes like cooked. Cause I want to know what it's what it does. Um, so next, I'm gonna get this pepper. So this is half a bell pepper sitting in the fridge. Um, so hey, what's up, Prince? I'm just about to make coffee. We were talking about it this morning, and I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, do yeah. it. Oh yeah. Um. Did uh, you did you make a decision, Prince, on the what coffee you want, or what uh, setup you want? Brian, I was always gonna make the coffee. I'm not. It's not like I was. It's not like I was like, oh, I'm not gonna have. No, coffee he today. forgot the. Co he forgot that he said he was gonna do it I and started get, doing something else. I'll get around to it. She bus. I'm just gonna do it myself. No, you're bad at it. It's fine when I make no, it. No, it's not. How dare it's you? So wrong. Why did I make it for you? When I make I let, it. When have I let you make it? You ask me most mornings to make you coffee. Because I know you won't do it. You're right, I won't do it. It's not part of the agreement. It's, it's the same reason that I ask you to carry me down the stairs. <laughs> One day. <laughs> this, is, this is why you train. Um, okay, so now I'm just cutting this up real thin. Uh, because I'm going to effectively dice this because I don't want the peppers to be really pronounced in this. I more want, like in this particular dish, uh, there's going to be a lot of flavor going on. So the peppers are, are more intended to be like, let's add some extra veggies. Let's, um, you know, let's, let's get some additional flavor in here, but we're not really looking for like big chunky pepper bites because we're going to already have big chunky carrot bites and sausage and, uh, you know, potatoes and, and whatever else. Um, so French press. Yeah. French press is great. I, uh, it's like, what I like about French press is that it is less work than most other coffees and like, the difference is fairly marginal. Um, I like the Chemex. I've talked about this before because it's it's sort of like a meditation. You know, it's you have to you have to pay attention to it. You have to. You can't just like push a button and walk away and do something else. Um, so it's like a like an active meditation, if that makes sense. Like I, I don't meditate. I won't just sit down and think about my breath for ten minutes or whatever. But I will absolutely do activities that like have me focusing on. A task. Uh, it's yeah, I really like it. So the real Python says that the turnip should cook similar to potatoes. Huh. So that would be fascinating. Yeah, go ahead and um, throw like a little bit of the grease yes, in there. Kind of dry okay. Um, so let's see. Next, I'm gonna get some. 
hanging out. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to um, I'm going to get my groups of veggies ready to go. So I'm going to do the uh, the peppers and the onions first. And I'm doing the peppers and the onions first because they can sit a little bit without getting bad. They'll you know I'll just get them most of the way ready and then set them to the side. And then we'll do the potatoes. Um, do you even want sausage? Do you want me to put sausage in this, or do you just want me to go all veggie? Uh, that and the egg, I'm not really want the sausage. Okay, yeah, we'll, just, we'll just do eggs, no sausage today. Um, so, I'm gonna do the, the onion, and so here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna show this because it, it, this is a trick that I learned. So I cut my onion in half, and I left the, the back on. Um, and then I cut the top off of this side, and I cut in like this. So I, I'm cutting in, but I left it attached. Uh, and I'll show you why here in a second. So I've left my the back end on my onion, and I'm cutting almost all the way to the back, but not quite. Now check this out. So now when I've turned it, I've got like an onion fan, and if I hold it like this and cut against my fan, I get a more or less perfectly diced onion, or you know, close enough for my purposes, without having to like fine chop. So I'm able to just go through here. And this is all the prep, right? So it just takes a ton of, a ton of extra work out of the, the process, which is nice. And then when you get to the end, you just flip it on its face. Do a couple of these. Do one of those, and that's an onion. Um, so, is it trying to fall off? It's just, how many carrots do you think we should use? Like three? Two. Two? So next, this is all for pan. I was just gonna do a little bit, but throw yeah, throw maybe like a big chunk and a little chunk in, and let's see what happens when they cook. Uh, then I need my bench scraper, and I'm going to get these out of the way here. So I'm gonna go. Um, Peppers go in first, and like it doesn't have to be an exact science. But I'm gonna let the peppers go for a couple minutes, then I'm gonna add the onion because the pepper is gonna cook a little bit more slowly than the onion. And I don't feel like you can really overcook onion, but um, <laughs> knife skills with Jason. Uh, I honestly, those are like kind of the the extent of my knife skills. We, uh, if you're interested though, a lot of local cook like uh, kitchen stores and stuff, um, or like some of the chains like Sur La Table, will uh, they have kitchens and they'll teach those skills. So like, we went to a Sur La Table actually and had a knife skills class, and it made a big difference. Like it really helped us with with a lot of the techniques that uh, that we use on a day to day basis. Um, and it helped like there was stuff that I knew from when I used to work in a kitchen and there's stuff that I've learned uh, Or like things that I that were reinforced um, It's yeah, it's really nice So let's see Next I'm gonna do this carrot. So let me grab a peeler and So I learned like a lot of things I leave the skin on so like potatoes I leave the skin on and stuff like that and so um I kind of. Except for us of potatoes. Huh? Except for us of potatoes. Right, right, right. Dude, micromanaging over there. Um, so, <laughs> so, with carrots, I, I kind of had this thought like, well, why don't we just leave the skin on the carrots? I bet that's where all the vegetables or all the, uh, the vitamins are. Because that's true with like potatoes. If you leave the skin on, there's a lot of vitamins in the, in the skin. But it turns out that the skin of a carrot has like extra stuff in it to deter insects that makes it bitter. So you don't want to eat the skin of a carrot. And I'm going way slower than I normally would because we've got two carrots and I'm not really in a hurry. Um, and I also, you know, don't want to don't want to risk a fingy. Uh, 
Let's, um, let's see, that's good. And then here, same thing, nice and slow. And then, once we get this, How's the how's the little one looking? Like the thin one? Um Do you wanna softer. should we pull the thin one and taste it? I don't think they're done. Okay. If it's like a potato, then it needs then it's not done. Okay. I've cool. never I've never cooked a turnip before. Okay. I've had them on a salad. So for these, I'm going to do another knife skill um, that I've learned, which is a, a like a rough chop. And so you take the carrot. Oh, nice. What happened? Turnip. 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 Oh facts. yeah, turnip facts. What is up? Thanks for stopping by. We are just uh, cooking some breakfast. Um, so I'm going to cut these. I've got my carrot. I'm going to put it at like a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to cut down, and that gives me like a fingertip sized piece of carrot. Then I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees so that my, my wedge is facing down. And I'm gonna do the same cut and I get another fingertip size thing. Turn it again. Can I put any salt in turn it again. Eyes? Turn it again. And now no matter where I am in the carrot, I get roughly equivalent size chunks. So like, this chunk is from the very back thick end of the carrot, and this chunk is from the front of the carrot, and they're roughly equivalent. Like this isn't perfect, but it helps me avoid that problem where I've got a tiny little carrot up front that's gonna cook way too fast, and a big thick chunk of carrot toward the back that will take twice as long to cook. So um, this is really, really helpful. I think this is a, a French technique. These are really good. Yeah? Yeah. Is it still? It's really hot. Hot. Okay. Mm. I know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Put yes, it in. That's, that's wonderful. Thanks. All right. We would not have included that. We would have shaved them on like yep, horse. That is way better cooked. Like they were good already, but they're like um they are kind of potato potato y but sweet. They're really good. Had no idea. Okay, so I've got carrot chunks. I already had potato chunks because like I said, I, I prepped some potatoes to do this hash or a different kind of hash. Um, and so these are already ready. And this is just like a regular, what kind of potato is this? Yukon gold, probably. Probably. Um, but they're cut roughly like similar size to the carrots. Um, and my, my goal here is to get them to all saute, like I'm gonna cook them in a, in a skillet, or one of us is gonna cook them in the skillet, and um, get them to sort of soften up a little bit, and then we'll bake them for another 10 minutes or so to like really get in and let things kind of come down together. Um, boil them, mash them, put them in a stew, <laughs> I'm into it. Uh, <laughs> all about those stonks. Um, yeah, that's that's exactly what we're doing, is we are doing, uh, we're doing turnip stonks. So these little, these little buddies, I'm gonna make about the same size. So let me just chop these up to be roughly carrot size. And I'm just like real rough chopping these. We'll see whether or not that comes back to one. Um, let's do maybe one more little one. Skin on. Okay, so I've got turnip chunks, I've got potato chunks, I've got carrot chunks, I've got um, bell pepper, and I've got onion. And so my, my bell pepper is going to go in first. Are you ready for me to take over here? Are you telling me? Yeah. Okay. I'm um, making coffee because. I can make coffee. Do you want to do the? Uh, do you want to do the peppers? 
Uh, like in the stove? Yeah. Yeah. I don't care, but I'm getting coffee one way or another. <laughs> I can do it. I'll do coffee together. Okay. I have opinions about my coffee. You have opinions about everything. I do. Alright, starting with the pepper, yeah? Yeah. Alright, so we're just going to put this in as a as the way to start it. Um, I always get a little bit of salt. It's good to season as you go. Um, so put just a tiny bit of salt in there. We obviously don't want to make it super salty, but it's good to try and season it every step. So we're going to kind of lay these out, spread them out in the pan. Um, it helps if my thing is on the um, <laughs> So I have it on like medium heat. Spread them out in the pan and then um, we'll let them sit until, I think you like them like when they're Cooked down I a little? Want, I can never tell when these are ready. So, like, I don't know what the right word is for this, but I want these to be, like, al dente when you put the, um, the onions in. Yeah, but how do you test it? They, like, we don't want them to be mushy when they're done, but we want to make sure that it doesn't have that, like, you know when you bite into, like, a really fresh, like, piece of celery or, like, like, or just any fresh you vegetable, like snaps. Not, yeah. We don't want snap, we, okay. but we don't also don't want mush. So like find that, that spot in between where it's, it's still got some texture, right. but but isn't like, we don't want raw. Like think think about like potato. Like we want it to move just past that part where the inside is yeah, like still you. a raw potato. I get you. Um, Someone wants to know about the grinder. The grinder is a virtuoso burr grinder. I got this, I think, I think I bought this at a local coffee shop, but if you want one, um, Coba Coffee in Portland, C-O-A-B-A -A Coffee, is, uh, they sell the whole kit. So you can get like a Chemex, you can get this metal filter that we use, um, which this filter is awesome. It is, uh, it's reusable, and so it's got like, it's basically a fine mesh inside of, uh, of a metal cone. And it's designed specifically so that you can make Chemex coffee and not be throwing away much paper. Um, so, I'm going to turn this on, it's going to get really loud. grinding down to the, the finest setting on this thing um, because it like because this is a metal filter it will not hold water the same as a uh, paper filter and so we make the coffee finer to make sure that the water still filters at the right rate um, so then how's that going over there good it's almost ready for the next thing just need a second Okay, uh, What's next, onions? Onions are next. So then we want to get the beans wet. Uh, so basically like the same amount of water weight as you have bean weight. And this is because when you first get beans wet, they're going to immediately start to like release a bunch of gas. And you want to give that a second to like settle down because that'll, um, that'll cause the, the beans to kind of like settle and get ready to actually filter. Um, what's up, Eco? Uh, I think I missed something in the chat. Let me scroll. All right, so these peppers... Hey, thanks, Simon. I didn't see that chat. I uh, appreciate it. Um, the peppers are ready, so... I do have opinions about everything. I'm going to put the onions in. Um, I check the peppers by just kind of pressing down on them with the spatula to see if a little bit of water was, re was released Release. and if they're soft, you know. Um, so we'll put the onions in next. And again, I'm gonna salt them just a tiny bit. All right, and over here I'm just adding, uh, I'm going up 38 grams of coffee, and I'm going 
up to 700 grams of water, which is a little bit more than uh, is recommended by like the coffee brewing books. But I found that I like it, and when I have 700 grams of coffee, it exactly fills both Marissa's and my mug, so we don't have any coffee that doesn't get used. Uh, and I don't have, I get like a full cup. So, almost there. And we're gonna cook these onions down until they, until they're translucent, right? Yeah, so basically until translucent. they look, yeah. yeah. So. And it, that, like, what I love about that is that uh, if you take peppers and onions like that, and then you can throw uh, celery in as well, and I'm trying to remember what that's called. It's got a name, like mirepoix. Mirepoix. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, it's like a French technique, and they basically, it's, it's like, um, it's like that joke about like whatever your favorite seasoning is. Like I put that shit on everything. If you look in French food, almost everything starts with that. Like yeah. you. You get yep. a, a combination of those things, and, and it's, it's the base of everything. It's the base for like all the stocks, um, all the sauces. But um, we don't have celery, so. Yeah. What does this taste like, actually? Is this edible? I don't know. Anything you eat is edible. That's nah, that's a little more bitter than I want. Um, another thing that I like. <laughs> Anything you eat is edible. <laughs> <laughs> What did I do? 10.30 a.m. having a coffee. I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, so now we've got potatoes, turnips, carrots. I think we can probably put those all in at the same time. And then I'm going to get some, uh, some garlic ready. And so I read, I think it was... Um, I need you to do this. This I can't. Okay. My wrist is not working. Yeah, it's not very sound. Gotcha. That cast iron pan is extremely. 
extremely heavy and my wrist kind of just, I don't know, it starts to bend. I can't get it a good grip on it. Uh, what did you want to do with this car like and I can work on it? Um, I was just going to do like three cloves, um, kind of smash them up and then dice them. Because what I'm going to do is when we put the, once we get the potatoes ready, mm -hmm. right before we put it in the oven, I was going to um, let the garlic saute for like just a minute to get some heat on it. Okay. You're okay with me mashing it? Mashing? Like, to get the skin off? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what I was going to do. Okay. okay. So now, we've got this going here. I'm going to get my jar of miscellaneous fat. Um, whenever we cook on the stove, if there's fat left in the pan, we just dump it into the jar. And it is one of the best ways that I've found to get excellent flavor into everything. Um, so just using like, not a ton, like a like a slightly rounded teaspoonful. And then I'm just gonna get that in to the pan. And I'm using this instead of like vegetable oil or something. So it's, uh, I keep the jar on the fridge. Now we go through it so fast that we just leave it out. Um, and now, it's funny because everything in our house is either sized for me or sized for Marissa. And uh, <laughs> it is, uh, it's pretty funny. So, pan is coated, and I'm going to throw in our potatoes first. Okay. Then, I think this is all going to cook at about like roughly the same rate, so I'm uh, I'm just going to throw the carrots and the turnips in together. Um, I don't know for sure, but we're here to find out. If we end up eating mushy turnips, that is, I guess, a price that we have to pay to learn. You need to put the carrots in first. The carrots carrots. do not take as long as okay. the carrots lost. Okay, so carrots and potatoes first then. Um, and what we are going for here is, again, we don't want to get them all the way cooked, but we want to get them mostly cooked so that when we bake them, the, the baking is going to finish them off. And once you get that done, you probably want to prep for the poached eggs. So carrots and potatoes are in. We're going to let those sit for a bit, try to get them like all down on the pan so that they're all getting a, a side nice and directly attached to the heat. And then salt and pepper. A tip I picked up from Roy Choi, I think it was, is uh, you should season at every step. So you're not doing like a ton of uh, salt and pepper. You're doing like little pinches every time. Uh, Xander, the setup for this is super, uh, super low lo-fi. So what I've got is uh, my phone is hooked up onto like one of those bendy gorilla pod tripods and attached to a door frame. And then I've got my laptop set up underneath it on top of a trash can so that I can see the chat. Uh, we're not using mics. We're not, you, I have one light set up so that it's at least not dark in here. Um, but that's it. So our, our goal is, uh, that's a good point, Tony. Again, we, we, don't, we don't use it so fast that it, it, we haven't worried too much about like prepping it. I know that we could like render the fat. We could do a bunch of things to make the fat more, um, like, we... Honestly, I, if we were doing this for other people, we would probably do it a little bit differently just to make sure that we were like following all food safety guidelines and stuff. But like we're cooking for ourselves, right? Um, that bottom layer, I have no idea when the last time we used the bottom layer was. But it's okay, that top layer, uh, it's always fresh. 
<laughs> but the bottom layer is also sealed in, right? Um, no, I mean, it can still go rancid. Well, we smell it before we put it in. Like, we're going to know if it's bad. I don't we know. I grew up find in, out one way or the other, that's for sure. Like, I grew up in Montana, and, uh, you know, my, my dad, I remember, used to just hand me, like, little pieces of raw chicken. And, like, so my, my squeamishness not an around... Not an example... I'm just saying, like, I, I grew up I grew up without a lot of squeamishes about food. Like, all the way raw. Like, just raw. Yeah, um, like, just raw chicken. Like, Eco is currently worried for my safety. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, live chicken, yes. We would just walk out into the field, we would just... Just take a bite right take out a of bite. live chicken. If it's, if it's not squawking, uh, no, it's going to try to do a silly either. rhyme. Like, I know. <laughs> So we're going to do poached eggs today as well, so one poached egg on top of each skillet. So I'm going to, um, I'm not, there's not that much to prep, but um, I'll show you that now. We can only really do one at a time anyway. So, um, so the first thing is to just get your egg in a separate little bowl. I use, um, so you can get one that's a, a little bit smaller, a bowl that's a little bit smaller. Um, that will help because it's going to try to it's going to keep the egg uh, in a more confined space. Um, but that's that's step one to prep the eggs. Start with a meeting. <laughs> what what kind of meeting? my potatoes okay. giving up the ghost. So my my other goal with uh, with cooking these here is to get some actual sear and and uh, like caramelization on the skins of the root vegetables because that's going to add a really nice flavor um, and it also I don't know I just feel like it looks nicer, like your, your food looks nicer when it's been seared a little bit. Um, you think I'm good to put these in? What do you think? Uh, I, that's on, by the way. Okay. I figured we could start it there. We'll move yeah. to the boiler once it... Those are definitely not done. The, the turnips also need a couple minutes. Mm. Carrots before the taters? Carrots before the taters? skillet roast carrots before so this is a this is a first for me and like they'll go in the they'll go they'll go in the oven so they'll cook there too but I, I think what you did is I think they're just too big I so mean, they they're pretty little but the density of the carrots in comparison to the potato you know what I mean you about to do math on me no I just they're bigger chunks of carrots so they take longer to cook it's not math. Science? Science! Science! Alright, um, so we've got our, like, almost there potatoes. And we've got our not there carrots, so we're going to get the potatoes out. And 
you know, it's a little, a little ridiculous, but that's that's the idea, right? Is you're you, we're making this up as we go, and there aren't any rules, right? Like there's there's just whatever tastes good to you and what doesn't. So what I'm doing is learning something and adjusting on the fly. Uh, so now. More fat, you say? Butter or something. Well, we're gonna add a little bit of butter toward the end. <laughs> yeah, I I wouldn't have done the carrots that big, but it's okay. I know. She'll. I'll admonish him later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these carrots are looking real good. They're gonna caramelize real nice. You know, you know what else we could do actually huh. is we can take these and put them in the skillets. Now? And like let them roast for a bit yep. while we finish everything so else. And four, then... It's at 425, that would be fine. Okay, so maybe we'll do that. Is they're getting good caramelization on them? Let me actually bring this over, I'll show you. So check this out, we've got, uh, I think that's in front of the skillet, or in front of the camera, I hope. Um, and so we've got good color coming in on these carrots. If I flip it over, yeah, you can see that. That caramelization is just gonna be like pure flavor. It's gonna be really delicious. Um, but the inside still isn't cooked, so let's throw it in our skillets. turnips in. We will get a little more salt, a little more pepper. down, make sure that they are going to caramelize as well, and then we'll just ignore that for a bit. And what else do I want to put in here? Oh, I don't know. I missed a turnip. I missed a turnip! So next, I'm going to make a, a sauce. And this is like, this is, I don't even know what you would technically call this. Um, You're done with all this, right? Yes, this is all finished. Such a scraper. Yeah, leave the scraper. Uh, so I'm gonna pretend that this is an aioli. It is, it is not an aioli. And if anybody is actually a chef and sees this, please don't send me hate mail. Um, but I'm gonna do a couple spoonfuls of mayo. And then I'm gonna get Frank's Red Hot. Oh, that's what you put in there? Yep. Huh. Do a big, big bunch of Frank's Red Hot. And then, I have... Straight up pickle juice. So I'm going to put a splash of pickle juice in here too. Not a lot, but... Always add the pickle juice. You gotta have that acid. Start here, see what it does. And so this just kind of turns into like a like a kind of fry sauce looking thing. Um, but what it does is this is gonna give us some like tanginess, some brightness. Um, let's see. Good. Needs a uh, needs some. Yep, yep, yep. That's good. 
Yeah, and so the reason I'm not adding garlic, uh, Pygon, is that I am going to put a bunch of garlic right into the skillet before we bake it. So this will sit on top of that, like, lightly baked garlic. Um, but yeah, this is, this, this is like a little hack that I found uh, last time that I made this that really made a difference for me. Um, so next, I'm going to shred up some cheese. We're going to put a, this is a, uh, a British white cheddar. It's pretty sharp. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I like it a lot. It has a, uh, it's kind of like, it's a crumbly cheddar. I'll, I'll cut a piece and you can see. I guess I wasn't done with that knife after all. Um, okay, so if I cut a little thin piece of this, you can see that it like it basically like crumbles in my hand, right? So this is this is a really like dry, but so good. Want some juice? Yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna take shred some of that up to put on top of our hash. How long are you gonna cook the oven? Like five to eight minutes. Four twenty-five. Mm-hmm. So I'm just using... You some... want to check those carrots? I mean, does it matter? It has to matter. We can always let the potatoes and the turnips sit for a minute. So let's get two tablespoons of butter and our garlic. So here's our butter. Off, right? No, no, keep it on. Well, keep it on. All yep. right. And then I'm going to get my garlic. I'm going to throw the butter right in the middle. And this is the only butter that we're putting in the dish, which is why I'm putting so much in. Put the garlic right on top of that butter. So we throw our peppers and onions back in. Will you grab that oregano out? We've been, oh no, we've been I don't ordering, want to use the oregano. <laughs> we've been ordering oregano, or we've been trying to order everything from a local um, local grocery. We've been using a place called Provador here in Portland. It's like real oregano. <laughs> it's just, they just sent us a dried, like a dried plant, um, which is amazing. Like. How cool is that? Uh, but also the whole package is in Italian. Like, yep. it's it's the most it's, it's the bougiest. Cool. It is the bougiest shit I think we ever purchased. Unknowingly, but it's great. unknowingly purchased. Hey, what's up, Nikki? Good to see you. All right. Uh, I think I'm just supposed. To, I think I'm supposed to put the I actually don't know how to use this mix. Do I just? Just you can just like crumble it off. Yeah. Uh, So I'm going to do one more little pinch of salt, okay. put that oregano on top. I need to just start my own herb garden and then this won't be a, we won't even need to use it or to buy it. There you go. Perfect. That. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do this, get it in there. All right. And now, um, the next thing that we're going to do is just 
get this incorporated for just a second. <laughs> I did just kind of scrunch it over the dish. Um, smells good, so that's that's a good sign. Yeah, smells really good. All right, so that's done. And now what I'm going to do is a quick swap of, oops, a swap of the uh, the water. Put it over here. So this burner gets significantly hotter, is why I'm moving it over. We have one good burner. It's not a good All right. So then I need my skillets that are in here. Where are the other eggs? They're right here. Where? Right there. Oh. OK. So I'm going to take my hash and throw it and like this, I'm going to stir in the carrots a little bit. And we're just making a big pot, right? Like all we, all we really want here is a big pile of vegetables. And there's enough fat in the, the, like the root vegetables already from the, what we added that we don't need to add more here. And you don't want to put those in until this is warm, by the way. I think it's, it should oh, be perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that was why I started wow. it already. Smart. Work. Okay. So I'm going to get these all the way situated here. Okay. Let's get the rest of that in there. Nice and complete. And the more of the, the food that I get out of the bottom of the skillet, the easier the skillet is to clean. Okay. That's all set. Spatula. All right. So then I'm going to take my. Let's see. We'll move them over here. I'm going to do a nice dusting of cheese over the top. This cheese is going to melt, caramelize to the side of the skillet. It is going to be glorious. Um, and then I'm just going to throw it back in. Same thing for the other one. Get that cheese on there. This is the right amount of cheese, actually. This is going to be good. Yeah, that little skillet is pretty awesome. And I use it to do cast iron cookies. Oh, they're so good. So good. I think maybe our next one of these should be on. You just want more cookies. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wasn't even like, that wasn't even a thinly veiled ploy. That's just what I want. All right, so we're going to do the poached egg now that this is in here. Do you need a timer on that? Um, so to make a poached eggs, you, a poached egg, you are kind of up against time, which is um, time. But you want your water to be boiling. Set a timer for six minutes. You want your water to be boiling, um, and it needs to be a rolling boil. So when you put your spoon in and stir it around, it shouldn't stop boiling all the way. You should still have bubbles along the side. Um, and that's how you know that it's hot enough that when you drop the egg in, it will cook. I use this, uh, I don't know how big this uh, pan is, but. Um, it's like a 10 inch. You need wa hot enough water that it can kind of swirl around the bottom. So you don't need to use a huge stock pot. But you, do need, you do need some space. And then I put in white vinegar, just a little bit. Uh, I think they say around like a couple teaspoons. I just kind of drop it in. Um, this kind of helps the eggs stay together. And then we start to stir the water. So you get the water going in like a whirlpool really fast. Um, you want to kind of see the little tornado there in the middle, the whirlpool, as it's uh, forming. And make sure it's going very, very fast. And then you will pull your pull out a spoon um, and drop the egg in, and then kind of hope. And then hope. And keep stir. Go back in and keep stirring around the edges. You want the egg to cook, but you don't want to disrupt the egg white. So you want to stay away from the egg white as much as possible. You'll know when it's done when your egg is completely white all the way around. 
Um, and then you can leave it in for a couple minutes, a couple seconds more to get the egg yolk to firm up a little bit. Um, and really you should be cooking it for about, I think two minutes tops, if I remember correctly. It might even be a little less than that. Um, Jason, can you please grab me a plate? Is this uh, temporary? Uh, like, yeah. okay. I heard a bowl. A bowl, actually. Bowl, I got you, I got you. All right. So the first one is done, and I kind of let it, I use a slotted spoon this whole time. It's not done yet. So if you pulled it out when it's not done, um, you will have caught it in your spoon. And what you can do is just don't put it back in the water. Just let it sit on your spoon um, and let the water kind of cook it right there. And that way you hopefully won't lose it to the form of it. Okay, bowls here. And the way that we knew that wasn't done is that as soon as we uh, started pulling it out, you could see the some of the white started to run and it was like, okay, that's clearly not finished. Like we want to make sure the white is cooked all the way through. I, I think. Like we did this last week on the show where we, we were talking about how to get the eggs perfectly cooked. Um, so last week we used almost like a basting method. So we, we cook the egg sunny side up, spoon the, the fat from the pan on top of the egg to get the, the yolk cooked, or that white cooked all the way through. Um, and poached is basically like a macro version of that. You're just trying to get all the white to cook, but you don't want to cook the, the yolk very much at all. You want the yolk to almost be like a condiment. You want it to be runny, um, you, when you cut into it, you want it to just kind of pour into whatever you're, you're eating to, uh, to like add a whole bunch of extra flavor there. And yeah, fresh eggs do work better. The next egg I'm going to use is actually a lot fresher. This is an older one. This one here? That's a fresher egg, yeah. Did you want me to do anything with it other than just crack it into this bowl? spoon of it too to make sure that the yolk is still you want to show that oh no all right so here's your poached egg the first one. Oh, there you go can everybody see that oh. yeah, it's so hard to tell this oh. is the camera this is the <laughs> yeah so uh this is the first poached egg and um you can see that like when I kind of shake the bowl, it the yolk is moving a little bit, but the white is actually formed up. So that's the first one. Let me just add one more. Um, I put a little bit of vinegar in each time. I don't know if you have to, but I find it helps. And if you've got any whites left, like if you know a little bit of egg got out of hand and stayed in the bowl, uh, take it out so that it doesn't. I just like to use as clean of water as possible. Uh, and after nice. you do a couple of these, like maybe three, I would switch out the water or add more clean water because you won't have enough. Um, so because we're using these skillets, these skillets are extremely hot and they'll burn whatever you put down. So. We have these wooden trivets, which there's nothing special about these. These are just hunks of wood. Um, we use these to put the skillets on instead of like plates or, or putting them directly on the table or, or whatever. Um, and they look a little bit nicer than like a, a hot pad, but you, know, you can also just use a hot pad. Uh, so I'm gonna go set these on the table because that's where we're ultimately gonna eat. But we will set one of these skillets here so we can taste it. All right, so we're just stirring this egg. And it's just about time. There it is. All right. So we take a look at these first. Let me give those another like one or two minutes. Uh, the cheese is melted, but I want Bobby tables. No Bobby tables, but he's making, he's doing a system of the down lyric references. Yeah. 
That one looks like a balloon. I know, it like bubbled up. Did you pop that? No. No, no. Um, so the egg white has like caught some air and it's like kind of inflated like a balloon. Um, that will deflate once the egg is no longer in boiling water. Yeah. I had that when I did the, the sunny side up eggs and I, I popped it because I wanted to make sure that the fat was making contact with all the egg. But uh, It's already cooked through on that top, so it's fine. All right, so we are getting really close to showtime here. Just gonna make sure that our, our faux aioli uh, is ready. Um, can you, get you, can, can you can straight up put these on top of the skillets. So let's grab this out and put it here. All right, actually, let's drop it right on. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so here is Okay, let me pepper this up a little bit and then we'll come and show it off. Put a little salt on it too. A little, little salt, salt, little I, salt. Little salt, I didn't salt the egg, obviously. Okay, some salt and pepper to finish it off. I forgot to do the other one, but I'll let you take care of that. Let me carry this over and we are going to uh, cut into this egg, see how it looks and have a bite. So first, let's look at the egg. And then I'll add the aioli. So let's see, this should be about there. I think the so first this egg, egg was better, full disclosure. I don't know about that. This egg looks just about perfect. Look, so we've got beautiful, yep, a nice runny yolk. The white is cooked through. That is a good looking egg. And our hash, we can see, we've got nice and cooked, Did you put your not aioli too on? greasy. No, I haven't put the aioli on yet. I'm not that, I'm, I was getting there. Oh. Okay, so next, now that the comes off. Um, next, I'm going to put on some of this aioli, and I'm actually going to do that. So we'll just pour it over the top, and then we're going to end up mixing it in. And now we can like really mix this in. So I'm going to very carefully not to dig the fork into the pan. Scrape up these bits and you've got these like oh, that's a beautiful cheese bit. Just the bits. Oh the bear paws are not uh They're somewhere. They're not very they're, they're not good for this hot of a pan. Definitely style they over will, substance. Yeah, they will they will get burned. Okay. So now we have our veggie hash, um, not vegetarian because we cooked it in, in bacon fat, uh, with an egg and this uh, this like fake aioli. Yeah. So, oh, you showed it already. I did. Very hot. Good? Good. Mm. Oh my god, take a bite. So good. Don't burn yourself. Ooh, those turnips are so nice in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. I want to try one of these carrots too and see if they... They caramelize really good. We put the, car the carrots in the oven. Um, so they got all like brown and crispy on the edges. So I think they caramelize quite well. Mmm. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Carrots came out great. Um, and with the, so with the carrots uh, baking for a little bit extra long, what happens is all the sugars in the, in the carrots start to come out. And like, I think I grew up a long, I spent a long time feeling like I didn't like vegetables. And what I learned is that um, like vegetables have to be cooked long enough for the flavor to come out because by default, they are kind of sealed up, everything is locked inside, and when you start to cook them, they start to release sugars, they start to get tender, the, the, um, the fibers start to break down a little bit, and you start to get these amazing flavors. So I, I think if you, if you feel like you don't like vegetables, um, maybe give it another shot with roasting and let them caramelize, let them start to look almost a little bit burnt, and I really think it's gonna change the way you feel about that. Um, so that 
is yeah I think that's it I think that's it we did we did coffee we did a vegetable hash um, so to just recap how we did it we cooked bell peppers in some bacon fat once the bell peppers are about halfway done we added onions went until the onions were translucent then we took those set them aside put uh, some carrots and potatoes in and then we baked the carrots for about 10 minutes while we finished cooking the potatoes and our turnips. We mixed all that into a pile, added some garlic, added some butter, um, put some shredded cheddar cheese on top, and then topped it all with a poached egg and this uh, this delicious like hot sauce mayonnaise combination. Hot sauce mayonnaise and pickle juice combination that's like a fake aioli. And with that, I think we're done. Yeah. Thanks y'all, I really appreciate you uh, hanging out. Um, I uh, <laughs> sell your peppers to get bells. Too many of you are playing too much Animal Crossing. Anyways, y'all, I think thank you so much for hanging out. We will see you next time.